Hi, I'm Dina Tripos, and tonight, a lot of guests on the show. A former mayor, a warm-up for the Ohio Lottery Show for years and years, a lawyer, a comedian, a TV historian, and they're all one man. Dan Swartout is back on Whiskey Business. Whiskey business, the podcast, not so much. We should put it to music. The podcast, not so much. Whiskey, about whiskey, as it is one. With, with whiskey. whiskey. Yeah. I'll give you powers to actually put lyrics and write us a I think it's a good idea. Yeah, you right. already got the lyrics. Put a little jingle to it. Sure. Uh, and tonight, uh, we're, 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 how many have we got under our belt now for 24? This is only our second one. Our second one. All right. Yeah. Number two. All right, we'll, we'll start, we'll get back into the groove. We'll start cranking them out here again. But, um, it's still January. We have two. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We average one a month. Last that's year. good. Yeah. Well, so we got okay. busy. John got. Ever since I'm, I'm watch this. Watch me. Watch me throw him under the bus. Ready? <laughs> Ever since John got a promotion. Oh. And no. went into and went into the corporate world. Oh. <laughs> that's it, John. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> not true. It's not true at all. It's not true. We all have been busy. Yes. We've all have been busy and haven't had a chance to uh, do as many right. podcasts as we like. But we're trying to right that wrong. Yeah, and not many people know this, but you actually have a day gig on the morning radio No, show. that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't affect That doesn't anything. take any time. Yeah, that doesn't right, affect anything know. at all. All right, a couple of upfront things that I want to uh, get to before we actually bring Dan Swart out is our guest tonight, and I mentioned all those things in the intro. Yeah, we're going to talk about all that stuff. Uh, uh, Dan is by far one of my favorite people in life and comedy, and a dear, dear friend for many, many, many years now. And this, he, he, when I say he's a historian, I said TV historian. He's also just a historian in general. He. Uh, this will be my fourth appearance on Whiskey Business, yep. and he was able to detail the last three times he was here. And I'm like, I barely you remember know the, one of them. Do you know the dates? <laughs> yeah, <No? laughs> dates. He, he knows the years. Oh. He probably knows the dates if I pressed him on it. But yeah, right. he, he knows his stuff. So looking forward to Dan sitting across from me this evening. But um, one thing I do want to mention: I got an email from uh, Blaine Franz, and he was hoping to get on the podcast. And the timing of this doesn't work out. But uh, they're doing a Pelotonia benefit mm, up nice. in newark uh bourbon bacon and buffalo rose on friday february 9th at uh union square music hall in newark on I, friday I feel like uh, we've got letters it's another opportunity for a That's song right. for another yeah, song the letterman we've got the, lots the, and lots the of letters. bourbon bacon and the buffalo banana rose. phone <laughs> and the tickets range between 20 and 60 bucks and the proceeds go to pelotonia that's always a good And the $20 ticket gets you a ticket to the show with Buffalo Rose, who won the 2022 International Music Award. Oh, wow. Uh, cool. They're kind of a folk group. And, uh, Are they from Ohio? Do we know? Uh, I don't okay. know a whole lot about them. There's only so much information I can Buffalo jot Rose, down. that's a good rock and roll band. And then they got right? bourbon and bacon. So <laughs> if you get the $60 ticket, you get a taste of some of the local flavors. I, I know that the High Bank and Watershed... And uh, a few others are going to be present. I'm not. I feel bad that I'm not mentioning all of them. And it's just a fundraiser, right? It's a fundraiser. There's no hundred mile bike ride involved. No, there's no bike riding that would necessary, be a mess. right? Right. Be good and then there's bacon. All the appetizers are bacon mm, oriented. Bacon. Yeah. So bourbon, bacon, and buffalo rose. Friday, February 9th starts at 6 p.m. at the Union Square Music Hall in Newark on 31 West Church Street. So uh, Blaine. I hope Good you luck. Know, that, that helps yeah. spread the word and you make a lot of money for Pelotonia. The other thing I wanted to mention, as uh, we're recording this on a Tuesday night, last night, and by the time this drops, it'll be over a week old, but last night, uh, I'm happy to say that our, our little film project, Down to the Film, mm -hmm. got a lot of love on 10 TV yeah. again last well, night. Local and the exciting news about that CBS is that <laughs> the CBS affiliate. <laughs> and the exciting, <laughs> the exciting piece of that little segment that they did was the fact that uh, entrepreneur, restaurateur extraordinaire with, uh, I think, now 100 restaurants 
Guy Fieri, right? Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Yeah. Guy Fieri. Why, why you got to? Why? Why? <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Why? Why would you just kill my lead like no, that? Oh, I'm sorry. Guy you know what? It's not Guy, Guy Fieri. Fieri. Can only hope that he has a <laughs> yeah. few restaurants, as the great and generous Cameron Mitchell is now an investor in our film and uh, a big, huge supporter of our That's film down to the win. film. That is a huge, yeah, awesome. huge even, win. I mean, even if he just said, hey, you know what? I'll feed the crew. Even if he said something well, like that, that's be a He is win. feeding the crew. Nice. Oh, oh, he, 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 said, he says, who's your caterer? And we said, we don't have one. He goes, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. That's I'll a win, it. too. Oh, that's stro- the big... Uh, that, yeah, are you oh, kidding me? On top of that, you get all of the financing he's talking about. It's yes. amazing. Yes. Oh, so man. Yeah, he's, we can hold the financing. We'll just take the caterer. <laughs> <Yeah, right? laughs> They're both. But, um, <laughs> you got to have a lot of sleepy guys having that uh, meatloaf. Yeah. i got to be careful when we have what. I was just a cap city today and that's what i had meatloaf mm-hmm. and the mashed potatoes oh, yeah man. gotta be careful when we have what and when we have it cause... uh well there's well there's a cool they put a piece together 10 tv yeah. and we'll um put it on our website uh whiskey please do. Please and do. facebook yeah. so yeah. you guys can check it out yeah yourself. yeah yeah because uh you know we're not done raising the money but we're getting closer every week we're getting closer and hopefully now that the uh, cameron is involved that might uh, persuade some others you mm-hmm. know sometimes oh well that guy's in well if that guy's in I'm in. Right. I'm, I'm hoping. And that's what he he said as much on the interview that I hope this uh, encourages other people to, yeah. to get involved. That's so nice. so thank you. It's uh, it's definitely a big domino that that's we hope great. just falls and knocks down some other dominoes so we can make this film, which is uh, the story set in Columbus and where everything's being filmed in Columbus and everybody uh, behind the camera is from Columbus, utilizing all Columbus talent. Right. Aside from our, our four leads, which we'll, which we have uh, one for sure, our, our Scotty Thompson and Salvas Cuzos playing uh, Anthony the bookie, but our two male leads have not been cast yet. <coughs> uh, I'm from Columbus. <laughs> do you want me to do our a couple two lines male for you? Leads have not been cast <laughs> yet. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to pay you a compliment. You're too young. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, right. yeah, I'll nice. be the Uber driver. Yeah, that's it. You're like too you've young. Been you're say that. That's, that's the, <laughs> that, that's the an, excuse. Uh, they're gonna say. I can play older. Uh, and uh, so, th- so that's my. Anybody? Anybody else got anything other news? I don't want to hog it all. I know that the no, uh, the Star Trek point podcast point. is going great. Oh, that's yeah. my big news. That's that's, right. that's huge that's news. That's my big news. Uh, this Friday, I'm going to be a guest. That's right. Edith Keeler. That's, That's right. right. Edith I'm Edith excited. Bar and grill. That's right. We're going to be talking about Mud's women. Yes. I'm this gonna, is the, I'm really the podcast excited about Chip that. and John are doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. The, the, yes. the, their, their, their side hustle, their mm-hmm. side podcast, which is uh, is doing great as well mm-hmm. it should. I'm a... I'm a huge fan, so I'm kind of I'm kind of geeked out about sitting in, the, in, in between them Dude, it's on gonna Friday be great. and it's gonna be recording. Fun. And and I picked Mud's Women because there's a feature on on their podcast called uh, "Did They Bang?" Oh, right, yeah. nice. And with Mud's Women, I figure there's got to be at least oh, this could be three or four. There's got to oh, be at least three or did four. They did they bang? <laughs> Uh, questions coming up. Did but they bang? Again, I mentioned on the last podcast. Kudos, boys! It's great. You guys, yeah. you guys compliment each other. It's fun. It's it's it it moves. It's breezy. Yeah, and it's, it's like it's yeah, bre- brevity is key. It's like less than thirty minutes, yeah, right? Because right. they get tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 30, 35, 40 Well, minutes. it takes us an hour. Now, but he, John does a great job whittling it down to thirty-five minutes. Is it minutes. Paramount Plus where you can stream the original series? Yes, yes. that's where yes. I'm yes. planning on watching. And you can get our podcast, uh, Edith Keeler's Edge of Pepper Bar and Grill, on YouTube exclusively on YouTube. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And Chip, thank you for bringing our our, our guest bottle tonight. Oh, this is man, Benchmark, foolproof. Which I did not do my homework. I know nothing about this bottle other than the fact that you were going. It's a hundred and twenty-five proof. I was like, which you, be you know, careful. at this point, really, I you, know, right? This proof but still, still, you know, does, does a high proof still amaze you? <laughs> yeah, you've been on this yes. podcast and joining us as a. A friend and now a regular for for a couple of years thank now. You. Well, you have my wife to thank because for some reason she came home from the uh, what's that called the liquor store. Yeah, she, that's what they call it. <laughs> what's it called? The liquor what's that store. place where they sell the she bottles? Came, she came with, home with, with the, the liquor store. Look at the side of the road. Yeah, she's like, look what I got for you. And she had three bottles of Benchmark, uh, Angel's Envy, wow. and 
God. Liz, I like oh, this what a lovely too much. Wife. I was freaking out. Well, thank you. Um, it's uh, it's good. It's good. I just took a little sip of it. Yeah, it um, is. It is um, really good. We can dig into the complexity of, of it later if you want. But also right. a big thing. Oh, uh, oh, okay. oh, 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 you really you needed to show me the yeah. pizza to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget Let's the go. guy. It's, it's not even prop pizza. It's your pizza. Eat it. Enjoy. Mm. Enjoy your mm. gotta get a Gatto's. Gatto's Pizza. Mm. Gotta get a Gatto's. official uh, pizza sponsor. Yes. Or official pizza sponsor of Whiskey Business. In Clintonville. Gotta get a, in Clintonville. Uh, address on Indianola again, David. I should always write it down, but I never do. 3420 Indianola. 3420 Indianola. And if I want to order one on the phone, the old-fashioned way. 263-3737. 3 or Gatto's Clintonville? 37s. Mm-hmm. Dot com. Or Gatto's Clintonville.com. Yeah. You can order online and they order deliver. Online. Yeah. Johnny got the sausage, just the sausage sliders, didn't you, that one night? I did, I, but I had to get a sausage pizza because it's my oh, okay. favorite. All right. Fair enough. As we welcome, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Stan Swart out. It is uh, very exciting to be here, and I have to say, um, just how modern and, and <laughs> modern. <laughs> podcasts are because... I started my first podcast with Bill Arendale, the Bill and Dan Show, yep. back in March of 2005. Wow, that's old. Podcasts weren't even a thing. Podcasts weren't right. a thing. You had to actually go and download the show yep. onto your iPod, and that's how you'd listen to it. There was nothing streaming. You couldn't get it on the iTunes store. And we had no idea how to do this, so we actually just made it up. We we took my 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 equipment that I'd use to take to shows. What do you, what do you call those things? The microphones and the speakers. Yeah, right. PA <laughs> recorder. Yeah. yeah, PA system. I'd run it through a PA system, then run that audio through the computer, record it, and, you know, just try to put something together. I had to manually do the RSS feed. And to see now that there's cameras and multiple microphones and mixers and people with headphones, this is just, it's, it's just, wild to me. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, and this isn't even as modern as some people can get. I'm sure there's there's there's, some, yeah. there's other stuff that's even better than There's somebody than out there watching got. me. But, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got headphones on. DIY. I, I, he's got a board. Yeah. <laughs> Literally did the podcast on a PA system I bought used <laughs> in 2002. And that's how we were broadcasting and to the world. And around. <laughs> you still, you still have, is it still, is it's still out there, right? It's still out the there. The Bill somewhere. and Dan show? Yeah. The Bill and Dan show is not out there it's except got, for it's, except for the collectors. The collectors have the audio. I've got the audio, but it's not out there anymore. So the, you can't go out, search it on the internet and find it? No. I find that hard to believe in this the, day and the age. The one oh, thing that, that you can kind of find the closest thing to it is um, somebody who listened to our show from Australia back in the day. We're talking 2005, 2006, started his own podcast and kind of gained a, a real following in Australia with his podcast. And he happened to be in Columbus for a wedding and had me and Bill on his show talking about the old days of podcasting and what it was like. And, and this is how he referred to us on, on the show okay, because of where we were in the podcasting realm and what kind of our show's legacy was. He called us, you were like, Nirvana's favorite band's favorite band. That's what he said about our podcast. Wow. That's, that's kind of awesome. Oh, that was pretty that's cool. Awesome. It was I pretty cool. That. I would take that I as well. That, uh, now, nobody yeah. knows who Nirvana's favorite band's favorite band is, and nobody knows about I, the Bill and Dan show, but that was, it's kind of, I've kept it with me all this time. So I would put this that isn't on a, you guys? I would put that on a t-shirt. That is, no, that, that is not. Is there a Billy and Dan show out there? Yes, dude. Yeah, I, I don't. Dude, I, I can't believe you found that. Definitely that's not. No, it's not them. No, it's not them. <laughs> No, and and you know Arendelle, he would not have gone by the Billy and Dan the show. Billy, he would not. He would not have it. <laughs> no. He would not have it. Uh, Arendelle still makes. I haven't seen him in a while, but I follow him on Instagram, and he still makes me chuckle. He's making great videos now. Yeah, he's, he's making made, these he's, daily videos. Uh, They're yeah. in, the, in the car. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, yeah, very funny. Bill's always been super funny, and that's why we started the show together. And it was always kind of uh, one of the reasons our show worked was that we were. We had contrasting viewpoints and contrasting styles. I tend to be a little more upbeat. Um, 
And then there's Bill. (laughs) (laughs) And so it worked really well because you had these two contrasting styles. And, you know, sometimes we'd get get into it on the show and different sensibilities and but but great, great friends. And that's what made the show work so well. And Bill is, as you know, Bill is so fast and so quick and can just be so funny off the cuff. It was it was a lot of fun to do. And, you know, I know as you get emails and, and letters, I mean, we were getting emails from Australia and uh, England, the person who designed our logo, won a contest for designing our logo was from England. And so you get that kind of connection and that kind of feedback. And it was back in the days of MySpace. Yeah, MySpace, oh, wow. I was going to say. Yeah. So we'd have guests on the show and the listeners of the show would go on their MySpace and, you know, uh, post on their front page. And it was just, it was wild. So why, why didn't it? Continue as as the technology improved and podcasts started to grow. Yeah, I mean you were you were there. You were you were kind of some of the first ones through the front door. Why didn't you keep going? You know, at the time, it was a lot of work. As you know, doing a podcast is a lot of work. Yeah, and at the time. Them. So much. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, you know, there really wasn't a way to right. monetize podcasts. Now, you've got <laughs> the guess what? Still 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 is. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got, you got advertising now, <laughs> merchandise, Patreon. Yeah, you know, there's nothing like that then. So it was really, you know. It, to see what it's become now, it's like, cool, this is what we imagined this was. We were just 15 years too early. Right, right. Well, sometimes that's where genius starts. It starts early, and then everybody, you know. That's Nirvana's favorite band's favorite yeah, band, band yeah. right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, you can monetize them now, but now it's a, it's about the, the amount of clicks, and the oh, amount yeah. of downloads, and so forth well, and that, so on. That, that's what makes it so different now, too, is back in the day, in podcasting in 2005, there was what 80 podcasts right. or something. Right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Now there are you're eighty thousand, no, no, eighty thousand, <laughs> eighty try million, like eight, try like eight eight million, and then some. Like you're talking about the side podcast. Well, then there's also a side podcast to the side podcast, right. and then there's so it, it, I remember when CBS News, like the national news that's on in the evening. Which is a long way of saying the CBS Evening News. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got there though. You I got, got there, there eventually. That's right. That's right. They were doing a story in like the spring or summer of 2005 about this new thing called podcasting, and they were scrolling a computer screen, and there's our show. There's our show on, on the, the CBS uh, Evening News. Oh, well, really? It was wild. That's crazy. It was crazy, but at the time there was like 80 shows to choose from, so we quick, had a pretty right. good chance of being on this. Yeah, CBS I mean, Evening Jesus, News. Eight, that's nothing. Yeah. People, people are like, well, why do I, I, radio's free? Why would I have to go listen to a, a you know, an well, it didn't cost a, it just It didn't cost anything to listen to It didn't cost show. anything. No. You just have to, you know. know how were, to do it. Before Apple put podcasts mm-hmm. on their uh, music app, you'd have to go to, like, one of these podcast listing services. Mm. And they, you know, they'd have these podcasts in various ja- genres mm. And you had to have an RSS feed so that it would catch your new podcast and hope that somebody wow. looking for podcasts, which was nobody, right, 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 would yeah. happen to stumble upon your podcast. And when people did and you're getting feedback and you're getting listeners, I mean, it was a really cool thing because, you know, one of the things now with podcasts, because there's so many of them, there's probably tons of people who aren't broadcasting to anyone. Right. Because the, the it's just like anything now in, in the content creation business, you're... You're competing against everyone. everyone, and if your content's everyone. not engaging and regular, the next person's per regular is, is key. Consistency yeah. is key. Because I and I will say that I you know I'm, I, I I tell the truth about everything. You know mm-hmm. we were floating along last year at a nice pace. We I said I was telling the boys middle of the year. I go we are double was where we were at this point last year. Nice. And then mm-hmm. we dropped off because we didn't we were averaging one a month as opposed to two or three a month mm-hmm. and and just that little blip yeah. in the consistency dropped our numbers because uh, if they're not they're waiting for your podcast right. and if they don't have yeah, it they're gonna, they're go gonna the find another thing. one they're mm-hmm. gonna find another and maybe one. they exactly. like that one and that yeah. one's regular it's tough yeah. it's a tough business you can understand why people you know how I many people have lost to vodka business i wonder <laughs> Before it was all said. Well, now I feel bad. Now on the intro, I should have put former podcaster in there as well. You God know. damn it! And also, I gotta, I got to, I've, I've, 
I got to get. You think Arendelle will come on the podcast? Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He would sit across from me and, and talk about anything and a- everything? Absolutely he would. Because there's well, a lot... I, I mean, I absolutely think he would. I'm not his agent. I mean, I want his, <laughs> I, I, I want his quick wit, obviously. Oh, fantastic. But I find that man and, and, and all, a lot of the struggles he's gone through in life and, has, and, and, and successfully has overcome so many things... I find that backstory fascinating as well, and I'd be tempted to want to talk to dig into that too. Well, that was part of the fun of the show is we, you know, we wouldn't just crack jokes. We'd talk about, you know, what was happening. The, the show started because, as you know, when you're a road comic and you're out on the road, you're driving at night a lot. And Bill and I would call each other at night on our drives home from our various gigs or right. on to the next gig, and we'd talk about what that gig was like, the weird things that happened. And we were like, let's translate these conversations to the podcast. Mm -hmm. So they included all sorts of, you know, backstories on his life, my life, the, the, the people who would come onto the show who would share just stories that would blow my mind. But you, you understand that too, from being a good interviewer, you're able to draw that out. And that's the thing. You hear something and you want to dig a little deeper. And then sometimes you go down some rabbit holes, but sometimes those rabbit holes are because you never know you never know we're, we're starting here we yeah. end up here right. and then the show this is where the, the magic is and, and well this is a perfect example I mean my, my first uh, thoughts when you sat down were, to, were not to talk about but you started and I found it amazing and fascinating and intriguing and here we go down the uh, Dan and Bill rabbit hole. Yeah. It was uh, it was something else. So uh, if you're searching for the Bill and Dan show, this is now the I'm second sorry, the Bill place. And Dan show. Yes, the this, Bill this, this it you sounded. Second, how, how'd you settle on on the billing? It, it sounds better than the Dan and Bill Dan show. And Bill, Bill it's and true. Dan. It flows. Bill, Bill and Dan, Dan sounds Dan. better. It flows. Bill and Dan. Yeah. Bill and Ted. Bill I was Dan. in a. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know what? That makes Bill sense because I was in a musical duo in college, and it was Doug and Dino. And that sounded better because we discussed. It sounded better than Dino and Doug. Well, I've known you now for twenty six years. I had no idea you were in a musical duo in college. <laughs> you oh, yeah. too. <laughs> you never told me that. What kind of music? Oh, uh, we uh, we had. Uh, I played uh, acoustic guitar. Uh huh. Doug played keyboards, and he also played banjo. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So we would incorporate all three of those uh, into the mix, and we would play. Everything from uh, Gordon Lightfoot to uh, James Taylor. To, we played James yeah. Taylor. Yeah. We would play uh, also bluegrass stuff. You know, because oh, wow. there was, yeah. it, it, this was late seventies, and bluegrass was having a bit of a resurgence uh-huh. at that point in time. And Doug was an amazing musician. He just he that bastard just picked up the banjo and ended up being like amazingly proficient at. It. He was already a keyboard guy because we were in a band in high school. We were in a band. We were in a Greek American band that played Greek and American music. A Greek and did you American do weddings and stuff? Band. We did yeah, weddings yeah, and yeah, baptisms yeah, and church dances. <laughs> we were at, uh, we were a Greek American band called Talevin in Greek Talevendopeda. Translated into English is. Uh, the fine lads. Mm. <laughs> you were fine, the fine lads. lads. It wasn't there, it was, I think it was on SCTV. They had like a band something like, like the that, fine yeah. lads or yeah. something we like were that. The fine lads at the Eleven Dope with that. The Mighty and, Wind, I think, was the, it was the Mighty, mighty Wind. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Doug and I, we had all the equipment because I left the band mm-hmm. my, my freshman year of college. I didn't want to spend the weekends traveling to Canton and Akron to do Greek baptisms and weddings. You wanted to move up from fine to a better, you know, I a, just a wanted, good lad. I just wanted to leave the band. I didn't want to do a it A better anymore. than fine lad. That's true. And then, and then the band ended up disbanding. Uh-oh. Yeah. Didn't was, you guys do a record, though? We did that? a record. We did Are a, you kidding we, me? We did, a, we did a Greek 45. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a Greek man. 45. Um, you still uh, got to dig which, that out. Which, uh, which is, what was, it was Opopo Maria. And Dio Cardias. Um, Opopo Maria, let me translate that for you. It means O O O Maria. <laughs> o O O Maria. Opopo Maria. And, and Dio Cardias is two hearts. And we did it, we did it, uh, we taped it, recorded it here in Columbus at Coronet. St- wow, how can I remember this? Right. Coronet Studios on North High Street, just up the road from where we're recording right now. No I'll be kidding. Damned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you still have a 45? Do you of that 40? Th- yes, yeah. I do. I do have a 45 of that down in the basement somewhere. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the band disbanded, Doug had all this PA equipment, 
And, and he decided not to do a podcast with it in 1978. We decided let's just start, you know, messing around, and we started learning songs, and we just went and uh, started doing um, this little duo thing, which was more entertainment than it was music, because we would talk to the crowd, we would involve the crowd uh, in a lot of fun things. Um, the, I, I I I wrote a I wrote a stupid Jimmy Buffett like song called we're gonna get fucked up tonight nice <laughs> right yeah it, but you didn't put that one on 45 didn't put that one on 45. not, not, <laughs> not getting really? local radio play with that one do no, you did not but <laughs> as far as audience participation i mean we would pack out you i don't know if you remember uh, i don't know did you go to ohio state yeah all right do you remember the ip lounge yeah okay and it, 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 yeah, we used to play the IP lounge on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. We also used to play in the basement. Oh, you had a three night residency? Uh, yes, yeah, wow, yeah, that's yeah. nice. Thursday, Man. Friday, Saturday. It's like you two. Louis here. Mackis, <laughs> Louis Mackis, who owned it, gave us, check this out, 50 bucks each a night. That's good money. Whoa. In Whoa. 1978. That's, that's really good nine, money. Uh -huh. and, a, and all bar we tab. could drink. Yes. Yeah, bar oh, tab man. as well. Wow. I mean, so we're making 150 bucks. Damn, you're like a Chris, a, a Greek Chris Logsdon. It was we well, well Chris Logsdon. I think it was was shortly thereafter and began his run. But we would do Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, and uh, we're going to get fucked up tonight. Fucked up tonight. That's, Eddie Rabbit's mad because it sounds like <laughs> I love a rainy <laughs> night. That's exactly what that sounds like. You know, like. it's probably written before rainy night, so uh, maybe I should be mad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but then. The, and, but then we would get the men and the women to sing. So the guys would sing, ah, uh, the so unpolitically correct 70s. So the men would sing, I'm going to get a woman tonight, a woman tonight. And the girls would say, I'm going to get a man. And they would just, each one would go louder and louder. And then, you know, it was just stupid, crazy shit. Then, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> I introduced yeah. John Rathbone and Jack Thomas Two comedy names that you're familiar with. Oh, yeah. Because Louis, I said to Louis in 1979, you should have a comedy night, an open mic night. Uh huh. And I'll host it. Because a lot of the stuff we were doing as Doug and Dino was interaction with the audience. Mm -hmm. So I was very comfortable talking to the crowd, being a host. And, and being a host yeah. and, and riffing and whatever the case might be. I had no desire to do stand up, I wasn't doing stand up. But I said, I'll be your host, and I would just literally riff with the audience and then bring up these open micers. And Jack Thomas. Wow. John Emmy award-winning Jack Thomas. Yeah, Emmy award-winning Jack Thomas. The John Rathbone. Yes. Uh, I, I brought them up for their first times ever doing stand-up. Are you kidding at me? At the IP Lounge. Wow. There you go. Talk about rabbit holes. Oh. We just went down one. <laughs> it's All right? It's amazing how your memory is, considering how much alcohol you've drunk in the last. I know, right? Yeah, it right? is amazing. <laughs> extremely sharp. So extremely. What was the end of the duo? I mean, how did how did the duo end? Why did you stop? You're riding high. You're on top of the world. You've got yeah, residencies. Yeah, residency. yeah, we yeah. did. We did. We did. And I, we had original music as well. I mean, real songs, not just fucked up tonight. We actually, I actually wrote <laughs> a lot of original music that we did. Uh, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, I remember now. I, I I I got a girl pregnant. <laughs> oh. I got my wife pregnant. Yeah. Ah, okay. My, my, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The, I thought that was the name of the next song. Uh, I thought yeah, that was I the I thought pregnant. that was the follow up hey, single. Where's the bed? I got a girl pregnant. <laughs> I got a doctor up. A doctor up. No. We had talked about breaking out. You have all your songs written down or on tape. About uh, I, re, yeah, re, re, uh, there, breathing found, some life. Yeah. In them. There's a uh, there's there's um. A uh, real to real tape of a bunch of songs that are written. There's there's cassette tapes of of songs that I was working on that I've I've, I've unearthed all these. I don't want to call them treasures, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but they're all treasures. The, all this music that I wrote in the '80s. I'm like 30, 40 more songs that are just uh, on, on tape. And my voice is so high; it's <laughs> like a whole other octave higher. But yeah, it's fun. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, uh, the, the woman I was seeing at the time, uh -huh. she, she got pregnant. And we got married, and that kind of, I had a baby on the way, and so that kind of put a kibosh on, on uh, Doug and Dino. Wow! Did you ever play? What were some of the other like around that time? Was it um... the basement of the Black Forest, which is now the Thirsty Scholar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you play Bernie's basement? 
I uh, never played Bernie's. No, never played Bernie's. What is the name of the bar that? Oh, um, local band, big, big, one of the biggest local bands of all time, from seventies, eighties, and beyond. Kind of a country rock thing. McGuffey Lane. Lane. McGuffey Lane. What was Z- it? Zachariah's Red Eye Saloon? The Red Eye Saloon. Did you no, ever play that? No, never played the Red Eye Saloon. Was that? Was that like? Uh, the, that was at like the time? A, that would have been. That would have been top. But we did. But we did cover McGuffey Lane songs. No kid. Because McGuffey Lane's first album had come. Wow, you're right. I do remember a lot, John. It's crazy. So I couldn't even a, remember a, the name. A, yeah. And then you're like, well, let me tell you about the right. song I cover. <laughs> We would, yeah, we, yeah, we, uh, I was in Austin when you called me, yeah. McGuffey Lane's first album, we covered some songs from them because we thought they, and they were, they were huge. That first album was, was great. They were, Lane. they were like bubbling under on the national scene. Oh, big uh, deal, they, big their deal. Their first album was great. Uh, and you, uh, John Schwab's been on this podcast, mm-hmm. and we'll have him back on again, but he, he can tell you stories about what went awry in the record, in the, in the music industry back then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting how you lose control of wait a minute that doesn't seem right 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 right, right. i'm going yeah. to see them this saturday actually where are they playing, playing? it is the uh what year reunion uh, what the, it's the anniversary of the first album right yes 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 and my pl- sister's a huge fan of them my older sister and they're so she bought me tickets me and liz and they're playing at kemba or promo west yeah. whatever what's it called now kemba yeah kemba yeah. live kemba. that's right yeah kemba I've, live. I've seen them they're great yeah, and Schwabi's yeah. great. I mean, Schwabi's great. I've seen him do his solo thing, too. Yeah, he's fantastic. Did you ever hear his Sinatra album? No. Swa- Schwabi's? That's, I think when we had him on the podcast, Schwabi, right? Schwabi's got a Sinatra album. Like Sinatra covers? Sinatra covers. No That's kid. wonderful. Wonderful. Wow. I mean, this, this podcast has got to be hashtag Bill Arendale. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag <laughs> John Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get you better in the analytics. Yeah. yeah <laughs> trying to optimize your SEO. That's right. We can work in Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> and we never get to anything I had planned. <laughs> We're hashtag new women is this <laughs> podcast. Oh, my God. Fucked up tonight. <laughs> Fucked up tonight. <laughs> Fucked up tonight. <laughs> Going to drink all night. Oh, my Are God. Are you going to do a reboot of your partnership with your podcast? Like, go uh, reunite with, with him? With and Doug and Doug, you know, yeah. uh, Doug is living in uh, Doug is uh, living in Florida. Yeah. Uh, in, in, close to my mom, actually. He's down in the Tampa area. And uh, I've seen him a couple times when I've gone down there to visit. He's uh, he's, he's very happy down there, um, living with his significant other. And... Uh, uh, selling wine. He's a wine oh, salesman. Nice. No yeah, kidding. Yeah, wine salesman. And still, still probably very. T- he was a film major oh, nice. at Ohio State All when right. he was in when he was in school. And we've got actual. Oh my God, we've got, we've got actual short films that he had to do when he was at Ohio State. And we did. Uh, that was the beginning of your acting career. Uh, yeah, well, or the end of it. One <laughs> 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 or the other. But yeah, wow. I mean. A long time ago. That's yeah, cool. I know it wasn't the end of it because um, I would see every month the movie poster from one of your old movies over at Mills James Productions. Oh, the movie bottom, post- feeders. bottom feeders. Bottom feeders. I'd see that movie poster. Yeah. Tom Bauman director. Uh-huh. And so I know that your movie uh, career did not end there. No, it it just continued to it expand just, and go just, above just, and beyond. Well, I don't know above and beyond as opposed to just the state in a constant state of mediocrity. <laughs> 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 because you can't see it. It's behind that. Well, but there's a there's a gift over there from Heartland to Darkness. Uh, blood oh, Church. Come on, yes. Blood Church. Uh, yeah, you never saw that one. I did not see that you one. You can stream it on Amazon right now if you can stand it. It's, it's uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I think last time we were waiting on like the, this right. special Hold DVD. That's Hold right. On. That's right. I didn't realize yeah, it was up either. Uh, I have the, the special Blu-ray edition. That, that's yes. what I'm doing. Jeff, can you grab that off the wall? A second show yeah, yeah, this, we're going to wrap this, this up. This, 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 <laughs> it, it sits back there for a I'm reason. Film. This, is, uh, this, is, this is what is the cover uh-huh. of the DVD. This is, well, first of all, let me point it towards the camera right there. Are you getting it, Johnny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right there. Uh, go down a little bit. We can't see Linnea's head. There uh, you go. There's hey, Linnea yeah. Quigley, Queen of the Screams <laughs> at that particular time. This oh, yeah. Heartland of Darkness. You had a love scene with her, didn't you? Uh, not with Linnea. Oh, no, oh, no, no. no. Oh, no. There's, there's your hero right there, mm-hmm. Swarty, right there, Paul Henson. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. I worked on that too. Yeah. Yes, you did, Johnny. I did. You yeah. did work on it. There's mm-hmm. a Ralph Scott worked on that. A lot of people yeah. worked on that. Um, and this was during. Uh, 
uh, when I just started doing I just started doing stand up. So I was 29. Wow. Years old and and did this. Uh, and I have video. Right I have here. video of him doing stand up at age 29 too. Yeah, do you really? Do, we have a. We tried to do a little documentary. What was it? Uh, called Stay on the Pony. Stay on the Pony. Roll that clip, John. Oh my God. I was so fucking pretentious. It was. As a stand-up? <laughs> As a stand-up. I mean, just, 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 no, the interviews were almost it, like... It was uh, what, I, what I wanted to be, right, right, what right, I right, thought right. I was going to be. I mean, no, no, pretentious is the right word. Okay. It, it, oh. because, I think so, because we all believed that yeah. we, we could do this job, and there's a certain amount of, of confidence and ego that's, that's required, and, and, and I had thought processes on... On yeah. what I thought a stand-up should be at that particular time, but to watch, watch it, watch it. You weren't quite yourself, Dina. Uh, no, well, no, cringy. I had not I figured out myself yet. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's funny that I still incorporated music in my show. Yeah, and my stand-up, right. I still harken back to music. Some of my biggest closers were all music closers. Like you did Elvis an Elvis bit or something. I did an Elvis bit. Yeah. You remember the Elvis? Oh bit. yeah, absolutely. It won the Johnny Walker uh, comedy competition, <laughs> <laughs> which we talked a lot about on my very first appearance yes, here. Yes, we did. Because how you won that, and immediately, I mean, it went from open mics to a loaded calendar just like that. Boom. It was, uh, yeah, uh, the opening act, MC work at all of the Funny Bones, which there were like 12 or 13 of them at the time, uh, twice a year. So, boom. Oof. Calendar. Phil. Were, were you an opener weeks. at that time? Oh, yeah. When you were yeah, doing that? I was that? an opener. Yeah, I wasn't. I, that's all I, I, all I could do but was Back open. in the day, they were paying openers pretty good money. I was making $350 a week. Which, you know, if you... Not bad. With inflation, you know, yeah. what's that now? About a thousand bucks a that's, week? Something that's like 1990 that? That's 1990 money right there, yeah. right? $350 bucks a week. But in order to do it, I had to, st- I had to stop doing what I was... The investigative work, which mm-hmm. was paying me well. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yeah, I took a, a huge pay cut, and then I started doing both because I couldn't afford. You know, I, now I was divorced and living in a little apartment in Clintonville, and you know, so I had uh, child support and and other bills to pay, and so I had to I had to I had to keep doing the investigative work and the stand up work at the same time in order to cover the bills. Sorry to take you down this rabbit hole. Nah, that's, that's all right, man. It's all right. It's experience, man. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. Sensitive side. I swear to God, I had some questions for you tonight. I really did. I really did. He's, he's like flipped it. It's flipped now. Uh, uh, he's uh, that's, why, you. that's why you should do a podcast again, because yeah. you, you did. You flipped it. You flipped it. Um, seriously, let's talk about some of the things that, because it's, it's been kind of an interesting life in the, in, yes. the, in the last few years. Yes. Yes. Now, if I remember, I'm going to go back to the beginning as far as your political career do i am i remembering this correctly we recorded something on my front porch we did you were running for city council and city council and pal yes and you and you foolishly asked me to do a video for you to a to nice a, endorsement an endorsement yes and didn't you get in a little bit of trouble for that uh, at, at the radio station yeah uh maybe i don't know possibly <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> Probably, I, I think because our station's in Upper Arlington. Goes, it's not in Upper Arlington. It's not in Columbus. It's in Powell. <laughs> That's how it was my rationalization. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I was one of those uh, don't ask permission, beg for forgiveness. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah those situations. But we recorded. Uh, we did right on your front porch. It was kind of humorous. Yeah, it was fun. It was uh, fall of 2015. And I was running for city council and pal, and and I I was elected, and <laughs> even after that video. Well, I, <laughs> your name was actually somebody wrote that in multiple times. So, really? like, is Dino running? No, no, I'm just making that up. Is Dino running for city council? And pal? That would have been hilarious. <laughs> Are you, no, you're joking. I am joking. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. Good. God damn it, man. That's crazy. Crazy. a career there, man. Right? That's, that's, that's crazy career. career. That's Could have missed been. out on. Yes, yeah, so that was 2015, yeah. and then I ran for re-election in 20. 19 was re-elected to city council and then in 2020 to see the mayor in in powell is not a directly elected mayor the mayor in powell is like many municipalities around central ohio is actually selected by the city council from the elected members of city oh, council I, not, I wasn't aware of that yeah, oh, so see man i had you he ran for mayor and he won we have, we we, oh, we have a city manager signs and everything <laughs> we have a city mm-hmm. manager and so then the city council, which is seven members, selects a vice mayor and a mayor who is the president of council and serves as mayor. So I was vice mayor in 2020, and then in 2022, 
the council selected me to be mayor. Okay. Is it a secret vote or a, a, an open vote? <laughs> secret or open vote? It's an Good open question, vote. John. A secret open vote. I don't know if they were like a, on a secret open vote. Right. I don't think it's going to be Dan Swart, huh? <laughs> There's smoke coming out of the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> a new pope. A new pope has been elected That's in right. now. <laughs> yeah, and so then um, my term ended both on city council and as mayor at the end of last year, and I decided, uh, uh, decided not to run for another term. So you could have. I could have run for another term. Another yes. term. Another yeah. term. Okay. No, there, we don't have term limits in Powell. Some municipalities around central Ohio do have term limits, but we do not. Okay. So would you have been appointed again as mayor if you had Probably won? Probably not. There was okay. nothing that would have prevented that, gotcha. but traditionally it has been a new mayor every two years. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. wh- wh- how markedly different was being on city council and being the mayor? It was very different because, you're, I mean— People come to you a yes. lot more when you are the mayor than if you are a member of council who's not the mayor. Do you have to do more parades? I did parades. <laughs> more parades. More parades. Well, <laughs> parades. <laughs> all those events. All those yeah. events. You know, one of the things that was Cutting ribbons. One of the things that was chicken and pea circuit. A lot of that. <laughs> one of the, the things first that shovel was shovel. <laughs> groundbreaking. <laughs> we can go on. Let the man talk. Let the man <laughs> talk. One of the things that was cool is I got, you know, we have our our big yearly event is Pal Festival. Right. And so in 2022, we had the Spin Doctors as the headline yeah. act yeah. at Very Pal cool. Festival. And I got to go out and introduce the Spin Doctors in front of, you know, thousands of people. You're and that, the mayor. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then last year we had Smash Mouth. Yeah. Oh, the nice. Headliner. So you guys are stuck in the nineties. <laughs> well, no, did you have any say as to those? I, as any influence as to who? Because I know music is a huge part of your yeah, life. No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't really. Um, we, we had somebody, a consultant, okay, who right. booked the acts. Um, but in that you know that, that band, those style, the, that genre, that's kind of like they're on the festival circuit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we, no, perfect. We had Smash Mouth, and we had you know like four or five thousand people there, or something like that, and well, getting to go out yeah. and introduce Smash Mouth. And the funny thing is, too, <laughs> because you know, coming from a background where I am a host and I have introduced, I don't know how many comedians or what have you. They're thinking, oh, here comes the mayor to introduce us. Oh, no. Here comes the mayor that'll yeah, slay you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody, so, it's Dan Smart out. So they're like, oh, everybody. Yeah, here, like five minutes. here comes the mayor, and I guess he's going to introduce us. Oh, okay. Oh, no, but, you no. know, coming from that background of hosting how many shows at the Funny Bone yeah. and how many events. Skill sets galore. Being, a, you know, the, the, the studio audience host at Cash Explosion. We're you know, getting to that. Yeah, it was It was really, it, they, people we were a little surprised <laughs> how I, personable how would i would actually and charming of a mayor you could be no 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 yes just, no just, yes no just, yes just having those. yes <laughs> having a mayor that could actually go up there and say uh, is, uh is this on uh, uh everybody please welcome uh mush mouth mush mouth smash mouth smash mouth <laughs> it was fun it was a lot of fun so stuff like that was a lot of fun and it was different because you know I would get people contact me all the time for various issues. What type of issues? Well, you know, something's going on with my street. Something's uh-huh. going on. What would happen on a street? Like what? <laughs> Potholes? Yeah. yeah. Our street could be in better shape. Our sidewalk could be in better shape. Our paths could be in better shape. This... We need better curb appeal. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, people would come to me and I'd respond and, and talk to a lot of people about a lot of things. And that was kind of one of the... You know, rewarding things about it to have somebody come to you with a problem, be able to proactively help them solve that problem. What was the biggest uh, problem you solved? Do you think in in your in your in your tenure that you went that you came home and went, I did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did that. Well, you know, Dino, and it really is a team effort. So I think <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> are you, oh, you, oh, nice. are you, you are so mayoral. <laughs> still did anybody write you in in New Hampshire tonight <laughs> uh, as, the, as the primaries are going on as we speak? Uh, it's a team effort. No, I believe that it's a team effort. Yeah. But I also believe that you were a good leader. Well, you know, we... 
No, thank you. you. That's uh, that's very kind. No, it's not kind. It's the truth. You're a good guy. It was it was fun. It was rewarding to see and be a part of something where I live and where I've lived for almost 20 years and where my daughter's growing up to to look around and say, oh yeah, I was a part of making uh-huh. this better or I was a part of this park. That's and great. It, it was yeah. See that very stop rewarding. sign right there. And you see that yeah. stop sign. All sincerity. Yeah, I made it. It was a two way. I made it a four way stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life changed for everybody. I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, man. And, and also, we, you know, we, the, the, the Dave DeRoberts who brought the Gatto's Pizza mentioned there was a former Italian club member who was the mayor of Powell in the 70s. And I go, for how many people? There was three, 400? I mean, you, Powell has grown. Powell is... And, and just gotten so much bigger in, in the last 10 years. As recently as 1996, Powell was a village, which to be a village in the state of Ohio, it means 5,000 people or less. Or less than 5,000 people. Right now, the current population in Powell, so we're talking from 1996 to 2024, right around 15,000 people. That's so you're having a 300% growth of the city in less than three decades. So, yeah, there was a lot of trying to manage that growth in a responsible fashion. And, uh, yeah, there was a lot to it because you've got Powell's a a nice place to live. People want to be there. And so how do we manage this growth in a responsible way? So let me ask you this. Uh, you, you got a taste of city council. Yep. And obviously you, you signed off on being mayor. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, is it, is it like entertainment? To, when I, and bear with me when I say this. Is it like entertainment? Like the more you get and the better you get, the more you want. So I'm curious, has this kind of curbed you or in in – makes you want more in the political world would you ever think about moving to a, another step right now now that you have the experience what district is that in, in congress <laughs> right now um <laughs> right now i'm pretty much really focused on family i have i have one child beautiful child one daughter she's in sixth grade it's amazing where it, it is amazing because we're at the part now because she just finished winter break in sixth grade mm. where she is on the back end of oh, her education wow. uh-huh. so she has now gone to school longer than she, she she will be going to school we're closer to graduation than her right. first day of okay. kindergarten that's a good oh, way to that's put it. sixth grade it. yeah oh man so that's my boy's in fifth that's, that's right, wild man. to think about and you know she plays travel basketball she's involved in activities and i don't want to miss any of that so right now busy my primary focus is i just want to be there for all of her moments hell yeah yeah, that's a good idea so right now that's my main priority are you still doing stand-up again Uh, we did we did a show together we did a show together for we did your your your, my kicking cancer show kicking cancer show which kicked ass we had you myself and Derek richards it was a really good show we raised a lot of money for brain cancer research at the james um another hashtag and that (laughs) Derek richards yes and it was uh it was a lot of fun but that was the first time i've done stand-up in two years it's your saying that night and you were great well thank you i appreciate that it was a lot of effort because you know when you are doing it every single night i would tell people i could roll out of bed and do 45 like that the muscle yes after two years i had to go back and and atrophies i had to go back and listen to my material and listen to the timing and repeat it so i could remember it so you know it's funny how life changed because on march 12th 2020 i told you he's a historian well this there's a real reason i remember this date march 12 2020 i was supposed to headline the funny bone here in columbus right march 12 2020 day of the governor's first orders related to COVID, and then i didn't do stand-up again for almost a year so you're like from you know having a calendar and dates and i'm Uh doing stand-up to i didn't do stand-up for a year and then i kind of enjoyed being at home being with family and as you know if you're out doing stand-up you're gone you don't experience you don't experience i remember thinking about this i was in hartford connecticut one time this was back in 2016 it was during the olympics in 2016 i don't know why i remember that but the olympics were on and i'm here in a hotel room in hartford connecticut because i'm playing the funny bone there and my daughter's got a dance recital back at home, and I'm missing that because I'm doing Ooh. I'm doing a show here in Hartford, That's and rough. so I I don't want to miss any of that anymore. And just being as home as much as I was really helped bring that home. You to got me. a taste. 
of you, being at home. You got a taste of being at home. Which was the and first it, time I was regularly at home instead of doing stand up. And it in, tasted good. In 20 years. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of yeah. where I'm at. And so, you know, it was fun to I go back. I have a great wife. <laughs> yeah, have, she's nice. I have an amazing child. It was nice going back and doing stand up again. And it felt good yeah. to do it. And people ask me what I miss about stand up. And I do miss that time on stage. And I do miss hanging out with other stand ups, which was a lot of fun. You know, you and Derek and I hung out that night. That we had a that was a great night. Right. We yeah. had a we had a great show and then an even better show. Better hang zone. Better hang at at, at Swar- that's the that's the first time because he's not drinking tonight because he has to drive all the way back and he lives. Jesus Christ! Where I didn't I didn't realize all the way on Powell. I don't know. No, 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 not so. just Powell. <laughs> not he's in a little. He doesn't live in Powell proper. He lives in Powell. Far Powell. Powell. <laughs> I don't know where, but I was like, "Wow, I can't believe that you would go to the Funny Bone and as off, and then uh, haul it, it back." Was, it was yeah. it was a haul, but that and and I'm not saying anything bad when I say this. That was because he was in the confines of his home and he was home. But that's the that's got to be one of the few times I've seen you a little a little extra tipsy, <laughs> a little extra tipsy. Because talk about it, it was like it was like a night that he did not want to end. I had to leave. But, right. But you, well, it's like it was the first time I did stand up in two years, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, what I said, yeah, I like miss rush. that. I miss that time being on stage. I miss hanging out with other comics, but but. I don't miss anything else. I don't miss the driving. No, I don't no miss, miss the, the trying to set up gigs. No. I don't miss being away. But I did miss that time on stage, and that was the first time in two years. And obviously you miss the camaraderie hanging oh. out with other comics because well, back at your house, oh, his basement. Let me tell you about his basement, boys. If you ever get the uh, opportunity to visit the S. Ward House basement, mm-hmm. it's a, it, it, is a fo- it is a football lover's Ooh. dream. Oh. And I might have, I might have the second... <laughs> Biggest DVD and Blu-ray collection yes, in Central Ohio. He may have after really? after, after, me, after, after Dino. Me. But after he'll Dino. be when I die. He'll be the largest <laughs> yeah. because uh, in my in the in the working draft of my which I've never finalized, but in the working he, draft he of my will, it, he's in my will for getting all my DVDs. Not Midnight Run. <laughs> Not Midnight Run <laughs> because you <laughs> don't even get me started with you. <laughs> don't even get me started. But yes, <laughs> but your he's got TVs. He's got t- you tell him. Well, yeah, we've got we. This was a funny thing too. Just everything going back to 2020, we decided to finish our basement. So we had this full basement that we had done nothing with except for storage since we'd had the house for 15 years or whatever, and we decided we're going to finish the basement. So we finished the basement, put in a bar, got three TVs above the bar, wow. three three um, TVs above the got bar, got a, 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 nice. another room with where the DVDs are and a bunch of movie posters and a big television nice. and. Um, Nice. Room. And uh, movie room, yeah. Movie the, room, the, the room. thing about that one is when they finished the punch list for our finished basement yeah. was the weekend before the COVID. Oh, uh, nice. So I mean, it was like perfect timing to the extent that everything finished. Well, well yeah. Be. Now we've got three people in our house. One can have each level yeah. because at that time, and that's the level I would be. And he's got, and he's, you know, he, he, he's also, like I said, it's, it's your discipline. First of all, bravo. Well done. You're sitting here. You're not in Bible, but he's got a fantastic bourbon collection Ooh, that he continues nice. to amass more and more bottles and he says, come over. And I'm so glad I came over that night. Yeah. That was probably one of the most enjoyable hangs in recent memory, and the three of us. And Dino crushed that night at the... at the. I did okay. At, you did. You crushed that night at the Kicking Cancer show. And that's the one thing you can always count on Dino, is I've had you on so many charitable events. events. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of events we've done where we haven't gotten paid because... You know, that's so fine. Dino, that's what he does. Yeah, that's what he does. So dude. we had him. He's done my kicking cancer show. Of course, I brought you into the great debate, which I heard was awesome this year. The first great debate I missed since twenty since two thousand and two. It, it was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah, I mean, I, I missed last year, and you filled in for me last year at the last minute. Thank you for yes. doing that. And and I heard that that was hysterical because everybody kept calling him Dino, <laughs> <laughs> which was which was yeah. You sure changed, which, Dino. Yeah, it was a was a they just Have kept. It was, a, it was a very self-deprecating <laughs> night for, afternoon for Dan Swart out. <laughs> you, if, if you'll recall from your various times, the one thing I remember most about that great debate is, you know, they'd always have the scoreboard up on the wall. Right. 
So they'd have the scoreboard up on the wall, and you'd go to the scoreboard after the scores are given for each debater. So I went to turn to the scoreboard, which was up on the wall, but they didn't have a scoreboard that year. So I was like, we got a scoreboard? And they were like scrambling, and they're like, no. And it was just like a, a message about joining the Rotary. <laughs> The year I missed. Yes. So they didn't have a scoreboard. So it's just a message about joining the Rotary. And so, like, no scoreboard. The Hilliard Rotary Club. And so I just read that oh message. God. That's funny. That was, that but was who fun. better to roll with it than you? It was a fun who time. Who better to roll with it than you? It yeah. was It was a good time. But I brought you in on that. I mean, I yeah, had you, you on a number well, of things. You remember, we we had that. I remember we had the we we met together to talk about how to revamp that yes. that particular debate yes. back yes. Yes. what you know what you need to do and what you need to cut out and and they and they actually listened to us. They did listen to us. They let you know which is you, you you're involved in so many events. It's like and I you, when you're dealing with somebody and it's their event, it's very very important because it's their event. Right. But they don't realize that for you or for me their event is very very important. And it's very, very important to us, too. This is how we do This is how we used to do it and have been doing it for years. And it's very, very important to you and us as well. Right. But we've done hundreds of these, and they're all pretty much the same. So what is, like, super unique to you, to us, it's, it's just how these things go. So for them to listen to the show people... And just here, we just want to have the best show possible. Give them credit for listening. Absolutely. Yeah, because they could have said, "No, we're going to keep it this way." And then, like, well, we, I think honestly, I think we would have been out if they didn't if they didn't do it the way we suggest that. I don't think we would have done it. Yeah, what was the fundamental hindsight. change? We made it a comedy show. They would yeah. split up the comedy. They would stop the show. Oh. And interrupt it with raffles and so forth and so on they would stop the momentum of the show and and we're of the school of thought that once the show starts baby it, keep it goes going. you got to keep the show you rolling keep the show rolling you don't stop it yeah, that makes sense you don't stop it yeah and it's so for them to you know listen to the show people and go forth with the best show possible which is I, whenever i do an event for somebody i'm like look i've done so many of these mm-hmm. Your problems that you're facing are not unique to you because I've done so many of these. And if you rely on our experience, we're going to make your event better. And you made another event uh, as great as it was. You took it up a notch when uh, I mentioned John Rathbone earlier. Uh, when you when John retired from the putting together the Christmas show, Swarty took the Christmas show mm. over at the Funny Bone mm-hmm. and escalated it and brought it up a notch with those those very same tenants that you that you 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 incorporated and implied, and it it went up. Those a were notch. those were great shows. Those were great shows. Those I were missed those. a lot of fun. I, I missed those too. I I've never heard anybody every year. Christmas show? I go, no. It's the COVID. one you're in. You're in that one, right? What? You're in the Christmas I was show. The, I was the, host. the host forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah. Forever in a day because the host gets to decide where the money goes. Mm-hmm. And I would always pick uh, Down Syndrome Association, down, uh, the Saco, and Columbus Dog Connection. And there was a. I, that, I, it's, I, I, I miss giving the money to both of those organizations, but there was one. There was a teacher who had a sixth grade class, mm-hmm. and that's the one I, that, that they, they counted on those monies to go to camp. camp. Oh. And, and and I just think about every year, I wonder, did they get to camp this year? I, I remember one year, because they didn't go to camp until long after the Christmas show. Right. But you texted me pictures from, from the camp right, experience. Right, right, right. right and you're right, like, right. this is what we did this for. Right. And it was really cool and yeah. really rewarding. It was. And it's, yeah, that's part of the stuff that you miss about that. You know, being, you know, the, the people would come to our shows and and maybe had a connection to the organization and were so um, excited about what we were doing and making those connections with people. That's 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 that was to me one of the best parts about doing stand up or being you, an entertainer. Do you think we should even consider approaching them about one more? I don't, I don't know. Uh, would, I feel would, like would, you would you it would go over well. One, one, one more. It was a it was a very Long a tradition, long, long tradition, and long, a long tradition. Well, it was a long show, but Swarty tightened that mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did, he did. God bless him. He gave me carte blanche, but he kept everybody else really tight. And one of the things I wanted to do was bring in people who had never had the opportunity to do right. that show before. Right, right, right. Because you had a lot of great comedians in Central Ohio and Ohio who never had the opportunity to do that show. And I remember when I was first asked to do that show. And I'd already been full-time on the road 
earning a living as a stand-up for like four years before I was asked to be on the show. And to me, it was like the biggest deal. And I wanted to give that kind of experience to other people as well because it was such a big deal for me. Right. And you did. And you did. And, and, and you brought some some new blood and some, some great new talent. Yeah, those shows were great. I, I would consider doing one if they actually wanted to put it together. But it was so a, right now they're not doing them at all. The COVID shut it down. COVID, yeah. COVID After COVID, them. it's like the, those couple of years where COVID and mm-hmm. and there was there was talk about there was like a late gasp when they tried to put wanted to try to put something together like a week before and I'm like, No, I can't mm-hmm. we can't do it. We can't do it that way. Can't do it. It's just it's I, weird I how I don't want it to pale in comparison to what that show was. Right. So if they wanted to actually plan one for this year, because uh, that show was a big deal, sure, big house, yeah, packed people who would come year after year after year. Every comic there bringing their absolute a, a game, game because it's, it, <laughs> you know, you'd want to go up there and show your best stuff. Because mm. I think the origin of this show was years ago, long before I was in stand up, was all these guys, and they're on the road. All year long, they don't get a chance to see each other, but everyone's home for the holidays, so we do this show where we can do some good for the community, put on a great show, and everyone gets to see each other. And so everybody, you know, wants to bring their A game, mm-hmm. especially when other comics are sure. watching. impress everybody. And yeah, so, you don't want to bomb in front of your friends, right? No. I bet you if we, <laughs> if the Funny Bone went along with it and we said we were doing, I bet you that we would be turning comics away to fight for a spot. Oh, on to get that on the show. show? To, fight, to fight for oh, a spot on that show. You, you don't understand. I had so many people approach me about being on that show yeah. or let's want to be it. on that show. Or, let's or like, like me, let's I'm a part of it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> All of a sudden, my, my back got a little heavier as you piggied on it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I've been a part of this thing for one year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Hansberry, you you would be good in the booth. You would be good in the booth. I, I uh, went one year. I did go one year, uh, probably like maybe eighteen or no. 19. I, mean, I know you went in oh, attendance, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I said yeah. you'd be good in the booth. You know, running sound, running sound, yeah, and right, doing do stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you, count me in. Yeah, count but, me in. Yeah, the funny bone has a sound guy, but I'm saying right, you'd be good in, the, good in the booth. <laughs> You can look over. You can piggyback on the <laughs> on the sound guy. I'll run spot. You got a spotlight? <laughs> no, you could record it. No, that would be too much evidence against you. <laughs> uh, trust me, if, if all the evidence against me hasn't been surfaced yet, then you know what I never did see. What? Oh no! The video of your roast from two thousand nine. Uh, your birthday roast. I don't think I ever, ever got saw a copy of it. Of that. No. Somewhere in the upstairs of my closet, there's like uh, fifty or sixty of them. So I'll get. Is a copy. it really? Yeah, a VHS. copy of it because that'll be, shit, that'll be fifteen years. I, think I, I don't. I don't want to see you or anyone else. I just want to see a video of me with hair again. That's all I'd like to see. <laughs> that would be fantastic. It's fifteen years ago. This, I know. Th- this year, this April, will be fi- I'll be sixty-five. That was my fiftieth birthday. Wow. That was fifteen. That was a years fun night. Ago. Oh my god. I, Arendelle, who we talked about earlier, crushed that night. Oh my God, uh, the, that uh, was one of my favorite jokes of the night from him. About it was it was about my liver. <laughs> it was a. Uh, uh, is it, I, oh God! I, I can't even do it justice. You almost choked because your liver qu- tried to climb out of your mouth. No, 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 no! It was, uh, it was, it was something about it was, it, it's something that something with Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, that uh, <laughs> Dino's liver was blacker than <laughs> than, 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 than something. I don't know. It was hysterically funny. We'll have to we'll have to pull out that video. Uh, have to pull out the video, but he he was he was great. And uh, Keith Collins walk in the room for a little bit. I remember Keith Collins. I had a line about Keith Collins that night. I remember this one. My line was Keith, because Co- Keith Collins had just done one of his 14 retirements from comedy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so. He's currently on another one. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Uh, so my line was, Keith, I heard you have just retired from stand up comedy. In related news, I have just retired from being an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a good night. As a and I, I say this humbly, as a as a person who you you could not have had a better birthday. It was a good crew. 
a uh, lot of uh, lot of great comics. A lot of great that comics. A uh, packed room with the funny bone. It was just and and we raised money for Columbus Dog Connection. And we raised money for Columbus Dog Connection. And thank you, Paul Anthony, because Paul Anthony put that together. You need to see that video. If for nothing else, you need to see what's on that video is everything that they did here in my house when I was away. Uh huh. They got into my house. Oh man. And this is gonna this is gonna crush you at some point. <laughs> Because somebody went too far. Uh oh. And God bless him, Andy. They didn't. Man. They didn't break any DVDs because those are mine, man. <laughs> no, uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> they came in. They got completely hammered and just started doing obscene, nasty things here in my house. Drunken, debauchery behavior. Right. Uh, Andy Man's in that video. God rest his soul. Yeah. Andy Davis from from uh, CD 101 isn't it? And then at one point, <laughs> and Mikey Lawyer, who you know, Mikey mm-hmm. Lawyer, and uh, you know Jamie Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, at one point, they're downstairs in the basement, and you know, you and I, I have all my DVDs mm-hmm. alphabetized, oh, and at that God. point, I had them not only alphabetized, but I had them alphabetized by genre and so forth, so and so forth and so on, and on the and on that. DVD, which I will give you, which I will get to you. Uh, Polly in a drunken, belligerent, just wipes oh, them all off the shelf, and they all fall down, yeah. and there's just pile of and, and, oh. and even and Mikey and Jamie looked at each other and said. That's too far. That's too far. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone too far. He's gone too, too far. far. This yeah. has gotten out of hand. Uh, um, let me ask you about another good run. Yeah. All right. Stand up has been a great run. You had a successful run in city council, and uh, as the mayor, and who knows where that might lead to. Once you feel comfortable, maybe you'll pursue something else. But almost nineteen years. Working with the Ohio Lottery, doing Cash Explosion. Cash Explosion uh, is it's been on in Ohio s- for thirty seven years. It's Ohio the Ohio Lottery's weekly game show. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the eighties and nineties, there used to be a lot of state lotteries that would have weekly game shows. Mark Goodman from MTV hosted one in Illinois. Really? Uh huh. Um, but it, it, I think. Gary Kroger from Saturday Night Live maybe really? hosted one. No but way. these were things that were big throughout the country back in the day. Well, most of those have gone away. And there's only one weekly lottery game show left in the entire country, and that's Cash Explosion, since uh, for 37 years. I'm trying to do the math in my head. That's I'm okay. not going to let it. <laughs> 87. This is 87. <laughs> Somewhere in there. And so, uh, yeah, I've, I've been the, the studio audience host, uh, warm-up guy, uh, audience MC f- since 2007 with Cash Explosion because Cash Explosion went away for a year and they tried a show called Make Me Famous, Make Me Rich. And I started on the first episode of Make Me Famous, Make Me Rich. Oh, and when I, they went back to Cash Explosion. I had no idea that that uh, actually happened. Yeah, and so when they went back to Cash Explosion, I stuck along with Cash Explosion mm. from 2007 until two weeks ago when I recorded my last two episodes. When I, I mean, almost 900 episodes. You're talking, wow. you know, that's from 2006 to 2024, 52 episodes a year. I mean, that's uh, that's 900 episodes. And so, yeah, it was a heck of a run. It was a heck of a run. And, uh, yeah. and, and you know, I mean, you know, as long as you've had your gig, when you have a gig in showbiz for that long, it's a, I mean, it's, that's something. That's yeah. That's something. Because, you know, in showbiz, you get hired to eventually get fired. You get hired to eventually lose your job. So, you know, it was it was it was it was a great run. So you retired? But, but, uh, What's up? You retired? I yeah, I, I, I stepped away. He, I told him I wasn't going to be. He, he bowed out on his own. Yeah. Little, little known fact: I worked on Cash Explosion. Did you really? Did you? Yeah. When? I was Cam eight operator for about three summers when they did the rose shows. No kidding. Yeah. When? God, this was like what kind of information. This was like out? Uh, I love it. I would say ninety eight through like two thousand two. So Sharon Bicknell was was the host then. Uh, it was a dude. Paul Tapier was Paul yes, Tapier. Paul Tapier, and there was a well, female Paul co-host. He was a good host. Yeah. yeah, I think the female. What, what was her name? Sharon Bicknell. She, yeah, that was her. wonderful person. Super wonderful nice person. lady. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a really it was a really good time. So I what, worked with a lot of really talented people. I got to see week after week, you know, people's lives change. They come to Cash Explosion. The biggest person, the biggest winner that we ever had on our show won five hundred and twenty thousand wow. dollars. Wow! I mean, that's life changing that, money. That is life changing. Yeah. And there's money. that kind of money is being oh, won I, a lot. And so you get to be a part of you know these the, these people's lives. You see them change. You stay in touch with a lot of them. Like a lot of folks, I'd go and do stand up, and they'd come see me at a stand up show because we made a connection at oh, Cash, Cash Explosion. Explosion. Mm. So it was a great run. It's, it's recorded here in Central Ohio at, at Mills James, James Productions, yeah. which is just an outstanding production house. That yeah, does James, James McCullers, remember him? You know, oh yeah, camera guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I know all those. I, I confess, I, I <laughs> one of one of my little. Uh, I wish this could happen because I've I've had many a scratch off where they were mm. entries into Cash Explosion, and I go, let me get on the show. Well, I swore he's still there. That would have been awesome. awesome. Let, me, be let awesome. me get on while you're still there. It was it was a lot of fun, and occasionally I'd have people that I know would be on the show, or a lot of people I knew would That's come to awesome. the, the would come to the show and be in the audience. And we had people who come yeah. to the show for years, again and again and yeah. again, either every month or you know we plan our summer trip, and this is our family thing that mm -hmm. we do. And so yeah. they had no problem filling the audience. Mm -hmm. People love to come to the people be in the love audience. to come, and we'd go. I mean. We we did when we had our 35th anniversary show. We taped it at the Taft Coliseum at the Ohio State Fair. We had 5,000 people there. Wow! Um, wow. And a turnaway crowd. Yeah, I mean, and we'd do events, and we'd have the, you know the fans come to the <clears throat> events, and you make these connections with the fans because they watch the show. I watched the show when I was a kid, and to have those kinds of connections and, and people who appreciate the show and the work you do on the show and. It was it was it was a great run and I worked with so many talented people, made so many friends, and and got to have a lot of fun because essentially it's just me doing crowd work. Right, I'd go Which and do crowd work. You're it amazing at my, one of my favorite things about stand up was doing crowd work. So I I do crowd work and we'd have bits and eventually my roles started expanding as as I'd been there longer. Like by the end I was doing the contestant rehearsals oh, and, nice. you know you'd bring in the contestants so they get a feel for how to play the game and you know a lot of the folks it's you know we're coming on tv uh nervous maybe <clears throat> not used to being on tv so people would come in nervous and maybe a little tense and you know you get them warmed up and one of the nicest things you'd hear people say is i was really nervous but you joking around having fun really loosened me up and allowed me to have more fun yeah. today did the they show. give did they give you a proper send-off I wasn't expecting <laughs> much of anything. Uh, of course you weren't, because you're a humble guy. But they did, and they. One of the things it was, you know, that I am a a long time wrestling fan. Yes, you are. <laughs> Especially back in the day. Yes, you are. And so they actually got me and presented me with a championship belt oh, that they had man, made, nice. and it says Cash Explosion, Goat MC. Greatest of all time, MC, 2006, 2024, had the belt all made up. It, yeah. it, it was just, it's one of those things that I wouldn't expect anything. And they stopped the show at one point, and um, I, in, I introduced the contestants into the, into the studio, and they stopped the show at that point. Uh, and then had somebody introduce me, and you know everyone oh, came in, and it was man. it was a yeah, it was oh, nice. Man. It was it was it was, you know you could you, you know good. W when you're doing yeah. something that you love, or when you're doing something for that long, you do it because you like it, right? And so it, to to step away wasn't easy. I bet not. And because yeah, there's such good people over there. Yes. Yes. Well, you know. And and so to you know, I was a bit emotional that day to begin with, and then I wasn't expecting anything. You know, maybe hey Dan, here's a cake. Thanks. Like, yeah, and they, right. and it oh, was, at least cake. God damn it! If there wasn't at least a cake, <laughs> I would have like Jesus Christ. Now were, almost 19 years, I don't even get a cake. They yeah. they made. Cake. They made the day very special. I know them. And sure my they wife did. was there, and my daughter was there, perfect. and that was it. Was very exciting. Perfect, perfect. And uh, um, I don't know who's replacing you, but I, I, I kind of, I feel for him. Oh, I, yeah, or I've, her. I talked to a few people, and I talked to a few people who they were considering to take the role. And the only advice I would give is, don't try to be me. 
right? If somebody replaced you here on Whiskey Business or on the radio show and just tried they, to be... They, they tried that. And they, yes, and they're just... <laughs> right. If they try to be Dino... I just, <laughs> It not work so well. They, yes. They tried that. So if well. they try to be Dino, it's not going to work. And if you try to be Dan, it's not going to work. You've got to approach this as you would approach it. Because right. if you're trying to imitate what I did, it's not going to work. If you're trying right. to imitate what Dino did, it's not going to work. So do it as you. Don't try to be me. Right. So have they replaced you? I mean, some, I, well, the, they haven't had any tapings yet. Any so tapings I, yet. I imagine I don't know. They had that. That you know, once you, I'm sure you gave them plenty of notice. I did. I, I did. It's so like once a month, month, right? They do three or four. Yeah, shows Yeah, they do. We we tape uh, on Fridays, two episodes right? on yeah. Tuesday, two episodes on Wednesday. Yeah. That's the four. Then we come back four weeks later and do it again. That yeah. was the general taping schedule. <laughs> The, so I, I would they ch- haven't approached, but if they did, I would say no, thank you. Right. I, I would, uh, and <laughs> with all due respect, I, I would not want to follow you it, on that gig. It was fun. I mean, there was I a would, lot of cool memories on I that bet. show. You know, we do road shows, like you said, you worked the road shows. You yeah. know, we like we did. You know, the Ohio State Fair. We we've done. Uh, you know, play. We did. Um, we did an event in Lima f- with Veterans Day in 2013 where part of the event was you know we'd ask the audience to bring mm-hmm. um food for the local uh food pantry and and um you know we had a packed house and we'd had it's amazing thousands man. of people there and we generated so much food for the local food pantry and it's just you know those are really cool experiences and people coming up to you and talking to you and telling you Boy, I really appreciate that you're here, and I appreciate being able to see the show, and I had so much fun. Yeah, the little small towns that you probably don't have anybody. You throw a rock, you couldn't hit anybody. But you had these high school gymnasiums, or, or, or they would fill 2,000 people in those places. We did. That was the big deal. That, that was, was the big, big deal. Yeah. We did Steubenville in, in 2019. I, I, I think I do remember you we going to Steubenville. We did Steubenville, and we had Big Red there. Oh, the, you had the big, the, the band? You had the, the, the big, mascot. The mascot? Oh, you had the horse? Yes. Oh, you had the stallion? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. You so had the was, Big Red stallion? So it was, oh, it was man, a, they pulled out all the stuff. It, it was, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. It was, oh. it was a great time. I mean, I'm still, it's going to be hard in two weeks when they tape, and I'm not there. Yeah, I for, I mean, I only missed a, a real handful of episodes over the last 17 plus years. So when, when to know that I'm going there and I'm or I'm not going there I, when it's going on, it's going to be gonna weird. Go the I, I, I got What's that? Go in the control room, just hang out. Just sit back. <laughs> but, but I got to ask how'd you get the gig? The, well, you know, okay. So they I told you that they were making the transition to make me famous, make me rich, right? right. So um they really not had any kind of audience interaction apart from the taping. And so when you have a television show and yeah. you have audience interaction, who generally does that audience interaction, be it on whatever kind of show? Comedian. A comedian. Yeah. So I was, you know, a central Ohio comedian who could do that. You were a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> Like and I, I've done, I've what? done. You've done. What? Wait, what? wait, what? what? So I've done that for other shows okay. as well. I remember, you know, when, when Not Mad. The answer the, I was expecting, but okay. The title a little disappointed. I'm, I'm, li- I'm literally trying to veer right, the right, conversation right, right, right. into another direction. You can do it. As you're zigging, I'm hoping to zag. <laughs> Um, Fair enough. <laughs> the politician in there. <laughs> when when uh, Mad Money, CNBC, yeah, when they came and uh, did a live show from Ohio State at one of the theaters from Ohio State, I was the audience warm up for that because again, if you're looking for somebody to warm up a crowd, what do you have? You have a the comedian. comedian. Sure. And I remember that day. I remember that day because they said. Uh, you, you, we don't know how long you're going to go because Jim Cramer likes to come out and talk to the audience. Okay. And he likes to come out and talk to the audience. So if it's a day where he comes out and talks to the audience, you might do 10 minutes. You might do 15 minutes. Well, apparently, it was a, lot, a day with a lot of volatility in the market. So I ended up, he didn't come out at all. So I ended up doing like an hour and a half. Oh, my God. 90 minutes of, of, of fluff? 
90 minutes of, of crowd interaction, Dino. <laughs> oh, my God. And so, but you, you're like, oh, you know, you're like, hey, hasn't the bell rang on the market yet? When's he coming out, man? I can only it's throw a, up. It, it's a new stock day. <laughs> <laughs> the market already opened back up again. So, but yeah, it's just, it, 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 but it, having that experience at Cash Explosion, because at right. that point I'd already been doing Cash Explosion for a few years. You know, it's, it's you know, sure. it, you're thinking, hey, CNBC, this is a nationwide broadcast. Right. And everyone knows Mad Money. Everyone knows. But the dynamics were the same for what I had to do at the Ohio Lottery Game Show as I had to do for that n- national national show. I mean, it's a, it's a skill set that has benefited you. I mean, obviously, yeah. you, you just said earlier that it, it, it worked for you as the mayor. You know, well, you, it worked for me in introducing the spin doctors. Uh, you know, well, as the mayor as, as well. Oh, introducing I'm the spin sure, doctors. I'm sure the skill set, and we're going to skip this part of the interview, but I'm sure it works for you as because you're back to practicing law again. Everybody doesn't, maybe you don't know, is a, is, is a lawyer as well. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, he does everything. But we're going to skip that part because we're, 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 we're running along and I don't really care that we're running along. <laughs> but uh, I, I, we'll skip the, we'll, I don't we'll care skip, if you're a lawyer. I don't care if you're a lawyer. I know you're a good lawyer and God bless you. Good. Thank All you. Right. All right. Well done. Well done. You're, you're, you can go ahead and tell us what I'm you do. I'm just glad we've advanced the conversation. Yeah. That's all <laughs> that's that's right. right. Is it personal injury or what is it? Uh, he's handling all the fluffer cases. That's right. <laughs> I had to. I had to mention something. You had to mention because you know I'm gonna call it back, <laughs> as any good comedian would. All right. One thing we'll, we'll close out. Something that's near and dear. One of the first. Uh, one of the first appearances on this show was because Dan and I share a love of television, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, yeah, we talked about stand up in some of those earlier podcasts, but we 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 went did a deep dive into TV. We can't go as deep as I want to, but one thing that we probably both went, oh, I guess it had to happen sooner or later is when Norman Lear, one of the comedy sitcom gods, if not the god, passed away at 101 years of age. And it, everything he contributed to television. If you go back and look at the 70s, right? You really had two big styles of sitcoms and two big production houses. You had the Norman Lear style, All in the Family, the Jeffersons, Good Times, Maud. And then you had the MTM with Mary Tyler Moore show, Bob Newhart show, WKRP. And, and it... It just two real styles defined that decade, and the cultural impact from those Norman Lear shows is just one day at a time. I didn't even mention one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and there, I know I'm not mentioning a bunch. I know there's tons, but it, it's amazing that somebody could have so much success with so many quality programs that have had such a lasting impact all these years later. Right. I mean, these are still, you know, you go back to the 70s and you want to talk about some of the TV shows. Nobody really talks about Mayberry RFD anymore. That's the spinoff of the Andy Griffith spin-off show. Spinoff of the Andy Except Griffith show YouTube, with yeah. Ken Berry. With Ken Berry after everybody left. You yeah. know, nobody talks about, um, well, I can't really think of them because nobody talks about them. The Six Million Dollar Man. Well, no, people do talk about Trapper John M.D. The, 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 Trapper, Trapper John, John M.D. It had a good run, actually. It had a good run. It had a good run. And when I was a kid, I thought Gonzo Gates was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With uh, Aftermath, not so much. No. Oh, oh no. Bad, bad idea. But, but everyone still talks about all of those, you know, even, to, even more so than shows that were gigantic hits. Like Laverne and Shirley was a gigantic hit. And that's, it know, was number two, or it was number one overall for two consecutive seasons. But people don't talk about Laverne and Shirley anymore. Like they still talk about those Norman Lear shows. No, but you do mention you mentioned the MTM and you mentioned the Norman Lear. I, you got to throw in Gary Marshall because Gary oh, Marshall Happy had Happy Days, the, Happy yeah. Days, Mork and Mindy, Mork and Mindy Laverne, and Shirley, Laverne and Shirley, and so forth and so on, uh-huh. and a lot of others. Some that lasted a couple seasons and some that didn't. But yeah, he had he had a good run too. Get, I think he was also involved in the Odd Couple. I, yeah, I believe you were right because I know Penny Marshall Penny was Marshall, in, yeah, in the yeah, Odd yeah, Couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gary so. Marshall. He was fantastic. Um, those were great shows. Uh, to me, that's that's the golden age. 
Well, here's one. Here's one that people don't talk about as much anymore. And it's in that MTM style, although it wasn't an MTM show. Um, Taxi. Taxi. Taxi is one of my all-time favorite sitcoms, but people really don't talk about Taxi Mm -hmm. much anymore unless they're maybe talking about Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Or if you talk about James Burroughs. If you're talking about James Burroughs, or if you're going to a Tony Danza convention. (laughs) That's really... (laughs) But, you know, Taxi is one of my all-time favorite shows. I have all five seasons on DVD. I think it's brilliant. But it does has not had that same kind of cultural impact as the Norman Lear shows. Right, 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 right. And even the ones that maybe people don't remember, like we were talking about a little bit beforehand, Fernwood Tonight. <coughs> one of, of its time. One of the funniest shows ever. You have Martin Mull, Fred Willard, because at the time, and this was a, a Norman Lear show, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Right. Mary, Mary Hartman, Hartman, Mary Hartman was like a daily parody of s- soap operas. Soap operas, right. So Fernwood Tonight was the summer replacement. And basically, Martin Mull lived in Fernwood, which was where Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was based, and did this late night talk show for the world of Fernwood Tonight. It was genius. It was fantastic. It was genius. It was fantastic. And Martin Mull was, I can't remember if he was Barth Gimble or Garth Gimble, but he played both Barth Gimble on (laughs) Fernwood Tonight and Garth Gimble and Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. So he was twin brothers. And it just was... (laughs) No, it it, it was was literally... it It had to... Confuse audiences of the set. Like, what am I watching? What is this? What is this? This makes no sense at all. Yeah, and but of it course, was ge- genius. It was the start of that Martin Mull Fred Willard pairing that lasted forever, and it was, it was just Norman Lear. I mean, what what, what talk show parody, right? Yes, talk show parody. What more can you say? I mean, it was kind of like Fernwood Tonight was kind of like a little. You said it was ahead of its time. It was. It was. It, know, was. it was doing that style of comedy. You know, five years before the Letterman show. Right, right. It was it was genius. I mean, everything he contributed, and the fact that he that he continued to work into his eighties, nineties. Yep. I mean, he he rebooted one day at a time. Yeah, and 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 was still doing it, still working, still had ideas. Still, I mean, if there's if there's if you are a creative person. Uh, whether you're a comedian, a writer, whatever the case may be, don't stop because I think that's probably one of the things that kept him going. Yes, absolutely. Don't stop. Don't stop. And and I, I'm even taking that to heart right now because, you know, I'm not really doing stand-up, but for the last 56 weeks, and I know it's 56 weeks because the app tells me it's 56 <laughs> weeks, yeah. I've been teaching myself piano. Oh, and so right. now I'm, I'm learning to play piano and I and I'm learning <clears throat> music and maybe one day maybe one day I could have a hit like your big yeah. big hit <laughs> I got a woman pregnant tonight <laughs> I know uh, that, 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 that's not that, 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 you're paraphrasing <laughs> that was the follow up hit and a, and a callback yes and and a callback that. from an hour ago so do what uh, that's that's great yeah because piano is, is I took piano lessons for a little bit and I bailed on them uh, but uh, but I, I it's tedious when you're an adult because you have to slow down to a child's pace. Oh. Yeah, you do, <clears throat> and and it's, it's also like when I learned how to swim, and they were all like a bunch of kids in the kiddie pool. Yeah, and me, and the same thing with the piano. It's like <laughs> <laughs> they're like. Eight-year-olds just going with their arms folded, going, "He sucks." You're smoking a cigarette. <laughs> well, and, and you're right. It does take you back to a kid because I was really, really proud of myself for doing a good "Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star." Right, right. <laughs> like, oh yeah. man, I'm nailing this. Yeah. Maybe Mary had a little lamb can come next. So as you're as you're discovering and and improving, because that's a lot of weeks. Yeah, be, fifty-six to, weeks. Fifty-six weeks. You should be. Can you sit down and like and just play something? Um, sort of. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, like, what do you? If I, you know, if you, if, right, here, let me, let me give you a scenario. Okay, you're walking into a place. Yeah, house party. Yeah, maybe a, a swanky little bar that's got a nice little baby grand piano. And Where do you think I go? <laughs> a house party or a swanky bar with a grand piano? And there's a piano Powell. sitting there. And, you know, and nobody's sitting I there. was at Sheets today. Where do you think I go? <laughs> All right, let me die. 
There's a grand, there's a baby grand piano at Sheets. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> right next to the roller food. <laughs> If you were to sit down and and just wanted a moment where like uh, oh that guy knows oh, what he's doing yeah, yeah. yeah what would you sit down uh, and, here I'll give you a, what at, would at you the play? Columbus uh, Airport they have a piano yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and they have a sign ah, that says one, please, please play to entertain yeah, like they, yeah. what would open you to the play audience. what would you sit down and play and with confidence right now I would. 56 weeks, there better be more than Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. There are some songs I can do, uh-huh. but I, I can't do them without looking at the music. Oh, have and you tried? N- no, maybe that's that's a good challenge for me. I would need the music. What I'd probably do is I'd take out my phone, uh-huh. set up the app, have my app congratulate me on 57 weeks. Because <laughs> you, need, you need that. And then I'd play whatever the app. In fact, I've got a notification here that on my app, I'm ready to play uh, Coldplay. Oh. I've got eight oh. famous Coldplay classics, and the Coldplay challenge starts on February 4th. To play on mm-hmm. piano. Yes. Ah. So yeah, play Coldplay yeah, clock. at the That's airport. Good. I'll play Coldplay at the airport, and nice. then I will be asked to so leave this is, the airport. <laughs> okay, but this this is kind of cool. This 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 these fifty six fifty seven weeks now yeah. have taught you how to read music. Yes, I had no idea how to read music. Now I can read music. That's great. Oh. That's fantastic. And that, it's like you know, that's a skill in itself. I would love to be able to <clears throat> write songs. I'd love to be able to. You that's know, my next question. Have you ever just started to pound out? Like, I know what the notes are, and have you ever started to pound out a melody? Not yet. I mean, come I, I, on, Swarty. I do what the app tells me to do. <laughs> when the app gives me free reign, I'll have free reign. The app's the not app going to give you free overlord. reign. You have to break away from the app. <laughs> There's a song in you, my boy. Well, that's true, because. <laughs> There's a song in you. If I break away from the app, I'll stop paying the app. So yeah. they're going to never uh, let me break away. I'm on week 572 right. now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ever learn to play by myself? No. <laughs> and then you gotta cancel the uh, hundred so grand later. Can- you know, it took me three weeks to cancel Audible. <laughs> 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 They wouldn't let me. <laughs> and the only reason I got it, and this is, you, you'll, you'll appreciate it. The only reason I got Audible was to listen to Chip Chinnery's uh, stand up book. Chip was so funny. My wife and I, we saw him. This is like when I was brand new in stand up. It was the old Funny Bone at the Continent. And my wife and I oh, went to the show, club. and the closer was Jack Thomas, Chip Chinnery was the middle. And he just would do this thing where he'd have like a cowboy hat, tip it, and say ma'am. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. He's so goofy. My so wife goofy. and I did that for like 10 years just ma'am. based on that. Ma'am. He was great. He was so just. And he's got an audio book on Audible? Yeah, he's got, oh, oh uh, uh, Charging Mount Stand Up. No kidding. Oh, yeah. That's Dino a gets title. a name drop. Oh, you get a name drop? <clears throat> I you might even have a name drop oh. in it. Now that I think back on it, yeah, there's a they, he goes through his no, you won't because you were you weren't you weren't there yet. He talks about his first year stand up. The, the whole book is about his his first year of stand up. You think you think you're a historian and have attention to detail. <laughs> this crazy wonderful man has every gig Wow. He did from day one through the whole first year where he was, what club he was at, who booked it, so forth and so on, who he worked with. And it's just, you know, names that like you hear. I, like, I, I would love to, to read that. Yeah. And he narrates it. Wow. And he narrates it. And it's a, it, it's fun. Yeah. You should. You should. All right. Hashtag chip chip. <laughs> chip chip. <laughs> you got to send me these hashtags, Dino. Okay. Uh, oh, a lot of hashtags. Yeah. We didn't even yeah, mention Derek's movie. Derek Richards' movie, uh, Don't Suck. Mm-hmm. Hashtag with, uh, Don't another Suck. Another Columbus comedian. Matt Rife. With Matt Rife, who's... Uh, hashtag. Hashtag Matt Rife. You know, I'm Matt not Rife. doing it. There's too many hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, too many hashtags. Uh, but no, we'll, but we'll I, try you know, to get I, I want to go back because I, I do realize that I introduced... Me learning to play the piano on an app as me continuing to be creative yeah, like Norman nice. Lear. I realize how <laughs> I realize how ridiculous I that is. You made that connection. No, 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 it's not ridiculous because because you know, to, to do something that's outside of and brand new. When I said be more creative, I thought you were going to say, "Oh, I keep writing stand up and I've got an idea for a, a novel, something that's in your wheelhouse." But to step out of it and to actually yeah. take you know, learn to teach yourself piano. That's that's kind of bigger, in my opinion. 
It's bolder. It's well, braver. It's been it's been fun. Unless you really suck after fifty seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the app tells me I'm good. <laughs> And that's why you keep paying it, because you need that affirmation. I need that affirmation. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, man, Swerty. Don't stay away so long. No, this We're has gonna, been great. we got to wrap it up and, and, and wrap things up, but uh, a real pleasure, man. Pleasure's and, been all uh, mine. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me in mind whenever something funny comes along as far as stand-up and like, hey, can you do this? Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for uh, just. Uh, Are having... we going down the Golden Girls rabbit hole now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. You got something uh, to tell us? Uh, who, who sang the theme song? Now the theme song, I don't know who sang it on the show, but oh boy, who had a hit with it? Oh, I'm blanking on his name. Seventies. Yeah. Andrew Gold. There you go. I was gonna say it, it has something to do with the title. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's good. His other do. big hit, "Lonely Boy." You remember that song? Uh huh. Yeah. I do. I do. Oh, I know. I, 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 I can never quit. I, I, I told you I wanted to ask you what's floating your boat right now, television wise. As television wise, quick list, top five. Like current shows. Current shows that, are, that <laughs> whether you're streaming them or network, whatever the case, because you know television has changed oh, yeah. so much in the last ten years. The shows that I've enjoyed recently. I'm waiting for the last season of Cobra Kai. Love Cobra Me Kai. Me too. You. You. You introduced me to Cobra Kai. You're the one yep. that turned yep. me on to Cobra Kai, and I got hooked. Love Cobra Kai. I loved Jury Duty that was on last year. I finally that show, watched that it. That show was fantastic. You can only really? do that once. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, it, it wrapped up, but I, I really, really liked Better Call Saul. Me too. It wrapped oh, up, yeah. I think, last year. Yeah. It was the, the last few seasons in particular were just as good as Breaking Bad, if not better. How many... Emmy nods and no wins, would you say? Oh, Unreal. 50, like 50 something 52, crazy, yeah. 52 Emmy nods and no wins. <clears throat> Back in the 80s, they would have said, that's the Susan Lucci of meth-related <laughs> dramas. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> crazy that it didn't win anything. Crazy. He's an honorary. <laughs> yeah. So those are three. It's a better call Saul. So, because you're very discriminate. Well, I'm. I've been watching. I've been spending a lot of time going back through old shows again. Like right now, I'm doing The Sopranos again. Nothing wrong I with that. I uh, recently started The Wire again. Oh, the Wire. So I'm. I'm doing. You know, I. I'm t- a lot of my time is taken with going through these old shows uh-huh. again. Well, is it hard watching a show like The Wire when it's kind of dated? There's no cell phones like they are. Like the no, technology. it's not. Is it, it's not is it hard watching it's that. It's not hard at all. It's because it be- that's how well it's written, and it, that's how compelling. The performances it, are. It's, it's a fantastic. It becomes show. a period piece then when they're not using yeah, stuff like it, that. Modern it, it, technology. Yeah, but still, still solid. Yeah, just like the same. I can still watch Three's Company even though they didn't have iPhones. Uh, it's not <laughs> at all related. So <laughs> yeah. I can only watch so many episodes of Three's Company. I know, I know. That's why I mentioned it because because now when I get into like you, you you credit my my historian and then I like these shows of quality, but I've also got four seasons of Mr. Belvedere on TV. There it is. So that's where I'm getting in. That's why I'm that's getting in that direction. That's where it is. I knew bringing Three's Company would do something for you, Dito, that's, that's or do one, something to that's, you. That's, 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 <laughs> and I've actually this made be... myself watch episodes of, of Mr. Belvedere only because I want to say maybe maybe. Maybe I'm missing something. If Swarty has this and has watched every season yeah. and has the whole series on DVD, the theme song m- memorized, maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. No, I missed it. <laughs> 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 I missed it. But that's what I love about you, man. That's what I love about you. You are, uh, you have eclectic tastes. You have, you are a, just slightly enough eccentric. To keep me interested. <laughs> and I love our conversations. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. I've enjoyed this a lot. Talked about a lot of cool stuff. A lot of stuff I learned about you today, Dino, that I did not know, despite being your friend for 20-some years. Uh, stuff that will air on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you were the interviewer. It's, a, it's, it's not that I that I keep secrets. It's just that uh, nobody wants to hear that. Uh, it's, it's not We've so much talked that, about them in earlier yeah. episodes, but geez, uh, five, uh, five six, seven years. Years ago, yeah, yeah. The, not secrets, because uh, uh, but uh, we do have an upcoming episode where uh, we're going to talk in depth, in length about the Just Sweats. Wow! Yeah. Oh yeah. The case I worked on. Oh yeah. As somebody who grew up in Columbus 
as somebody who remembered when that all went down and as somebody who shopped at Just Sweats yeah. and remembers the commercials <laughs> and remembers that guy because that guy became a celebrity here in Central right. Ohio yeah. through the commercials. Well, and you know that I was the investigator. I, I'm that. well aware. I've yeah, seen yeah. you on multiple. I think I've texted you. You're on yeah. TV right now yeah, talking TV about right Just now, Sweats. Yeah, with, uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, the Murders of Los yeah. Angeles or whatever yeah. that's uh, yeah. the, whatever that show's called right now. Oh called. yeah, I'm, now that that's going to be that's that's exciting. Yeah, my uh, next door neighbor, who's also an attorney, who maybe you know, I don't even know, Bill Mattis. No, no, he's an attorney for. He's going to actually conduct the interview he's gonna because he's so done. you're gonna be interviewed. i'm gonna be the guest wow on my own podcast are wow. you gonna sit there or are you gonna sit where uh no you gotta sit there you. yeah you gotta sit in the guest chair why well, i gotta sit in the guest chair because you're the guest all right whatever Come you on, we gotta want. get the feel right. down you know get you that you can't smoke because take the, the edge don't smoke yeah take the edge <laughs> off <laughs> it's true no but it's uh there's there, there, there was there was there was a lot in that recent oxygen show there was there's some stuff that we covered but there's Wow. There's a lot of stuff that the only way we're going to get it all out is on this podcast. Wow. Hashtag just sweats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you want to come watch? I, you know, if you're having an audience, I wouldn't mind. All right. Cool. Yeah. Do that we would could, be pretty cool. Next. What's next? What's next? Yeah, do that. Do uh, that next. I'll talk to Bill. You know, he's up for it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. That's going to be a, that's that's gonna right. be a fun We're looking one. for somebody for next week. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think we just found I, him. I think yeah. I think he right needs a here. little more. Yeah. Bill needs a little more prep time. Oh, any good attorney needs a little. Uh, Absolutely needs yeah. good preparation. Absolutely, right, 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 right. So, so he'll be ready next week. So he <laughs> might be, I, you know, he. I, I think he's kind of got notes already from before because we did the uh, whiskey business depositions. We did one That's or right. one or two. I think two. two. Two of those, yeah. and we yeah. got right. Three was like right when we were getting into the juicy stuff juicy about stuff. just sweat. And I put a, yeah. I, I pumped the brakes on mm. that. Yeah. So he could be ready, huh? He could be. Ready. He could be ready. He could be ready. I guess John, I'd you've be... been itching to get this done, dude. I've been trying to get him to do it for like four years. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Dark past. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the time. Dark past. Good times. Good times. Dark past. That should be a slogan for some whiskey. That's right. Yeah. That's our new whiskey business slogan. <laughs> Good times. Dark, dark past. Dark past. <laughs> benchmark. <laughs> Hashtag benchmark. Oh, thank you, Chip, for the benchmark whiskey again. We didn't kill it. The benchmark, uh, what is there. this? Nights early. The, the foolproof. foolproof. That's yeah. good stuff. The foolproof. 125. Yeah. 125. Swarty has, has consumed it before, so you speak well of it. Mm -hmm. right. Under 20 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. My wife got it. It's like it's like 19 or $21. I, I think the foolproof is just over 20. Oh, Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Around you 20 kidding bucks. me? That's a it's bourbon a great value. Uh, thank you, Greg Hansberry. You want to do quick business before we go? Sure. Whiskey Just business the uh, is the uh, uh, podcast mm -hmm. not so much Bravo, about whiskey well as it is one with whiskey. Yes. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Twitter's not called Twitter anymore. It's X. X. It's uh, X. YouTube, Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis. Go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button there. Ding, ding. Hit the bell over here. Smash. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> that backwards, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny, for some of the uh, nice little shorts you've been putting up on. Uh, yeah, Chip, uh, Chip uh, got them. I put them up. Yeah, all right. Nice well, thank Chip. you both of you for You're taking welcome. time from. It's getting a lot of love. Eight hundred uh, hits last time I checked. Over, not over not, over not as many videos. as Edith Killer's Bar and Grill, but that's okay. <laughs> but we're, we're, ten thousand or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per oh. video. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. It's just him watching them over and over and over again, <laughs> just to get the numbers up. My <laughs> wife would probably agree with you. She's too more obsessed with that. <laughs> that so funny. They have a, a Star Trek podcast. Uh, do you like Star Trek? You know, I do like Star Trek. Wrath the of original? Khan is one of my favorite yeah. movies. <clears throat> Wrath yeah. of Khan is fantastic. This I haven't is set the Alpha Flame. <laughs> <laughs> Is really good, <laughs> and I know exactly <laughs> the scene because he's talking to Chekhov. And Chekhov yes. told him they left him at a nice place, but it wasn't a nice place because it was Seti Alpha Five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a little piece of trivia I just found out last week in respects to oh Wrath of Khan, and I went, huh? In the movie, yeah. When uh, Khan is is pointing at Chekhov and says, "I remember you." And you Ooh, go back to the Chekhov. original episode. He wasn't, Space on, the episode. He Space wasn't on the episode. So I've heard people try to explain, explain that. Explain that. That, you, that. He was 
still on the crew because you need more people on the crew to run. Yeah, what I said. But he they had drinks uh, yeah. you know, at some point. Uh, no. Maybe, Maybe he, he needs just, to be the guest this Maybe he week. needs to be the guest <laughs> on Friday, yeah. <laughs> well, that, was, I, that, that was a piece of trivia that I didn't know. Yes. Well, I heard in the novelization of Star Trek II, the, the Rebel novelization? Khan. Yes. Uh, uh, Khan runs into Chekhov in the hallway <laughs> as he's cleaning some sort of uh, Jeffrey's tube out from the, a night's debauchery. Thanks, David. Wow. All right. I gotta get the bag. Back. The D-Row. Gotta get the bag. D-Row from Gatto. Gotta get a Gatto. Gotta get a Gatto. Nice to meet you. Good to see you, pal. Thank you for the pizza. Gotta get a Gatto's. Gotta get a Gatto. Wow. Okay. That's good pizza. I had the mushroom, uh, mushroom pepperoni yeah. today. It, it looked real good. I had the sausage and the sub. And the sub. Oh, yeah. And I mm. ate the cardboard box. And <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that, that paper is I licked the lid. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that part of it is my favorite. <laughs> gotta, okay. gotta suck We've been trying box. to say goodbye for 10 minutes. <laughs> I know. Man, I know. I know. Sweet. We're in an my hour and 45 minutes. I, I really <laughs> thought when I said good times, that's like good times. All right, <laughs> these <laughs> have been good times. Yeah, Let's yeah, yeah, that, was, that was the no. natural out, wasn't it? <laughs> Yes, that was, that was my tossing the outro. I know, it was great. It was great. We're like that comic that like doesn't know when to get off. Yeah. Like you just had your closing, you had your big laugh, your big closing, you go. Say goodnight. Well, I didn't do it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over in the other room with a flashlight and just flash it. Yeah, that, would, that, would, that would probably do the trick because that's it. Do we have whiskey business music start playing? Yeah, like yeah, wrap I'm it up? Play music? I'm going to play wants. you off, baby. It's 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 your fault. <laughs> you're engaging. You're interesting, and I always, there's like a wealth of information I haven't extracted from you tonight, and I'm like kind of like annoyed at myself. Well, but. that's that's the beauty of the podcast. This I isn't know, the last I episode. Know, I, know, I know. You'll be back. You'll, You'll be back. back. Good think, times. <laughs> <laughs> Good times indeed. <laughs> Thanks to <laughs> on the audio side, Greg Hansberry. Yes. On the video side, John Whitney. And on the every other side, Chip Cosell back there. Thank Woo-hoo. you, Chip. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And Danny, thank you, man. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Always a great time. Dan thank Swart you. out, our guest. Yeah. Share this with yes. your friends. Woo-hoo. There's so many things that are in this episode that you want people to see and, and share and enjoy, so please do it. And until the next bottle, I'm Dino Tripodis. Good night. <laughs>